now and ever into the age of all ages, amen. <clears throat> uh, today is the first Sunday of uh, the first month of the Coptic calendar, wishing you all a blessed, happy new year. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as we have been saying the last couple of weeks, the church taught us uh, how to prepare for the new year um, with constant watchfulness and sincere repentance. And then the church begins the new year um, continuing those goals in our spiritual life that we set for ourselves, building on the concept of, of repentance and the importance of true love, um, which is both the motivation for and the product of true repentance. So the theme of this first month is twofold, basically. It's God's love for the sinners, but also the product of the love, which is the repentance or the repentant heart. And so today, the Lord Jesus Christ was criticized for being a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Um, and uh, as you know also, that usually when a, a commemoration or a special um, feast occurs during the week, the church will select the Sunday closest to it to um, emphasize or repeat that message for maybe the people who were not able to attend during that week. So this week, um, the second day of, of the month, we celebrated um, or commemorated uh, St. John the Baptist. And so that's another reason why, if you noticed all of the readings, especially all of the Gospels from last night, this morning, and today, um, uh, were about John the Baptist and the Lord himself, especially speaking about him. <clears throat> so that's one reason why we selected, uh, the church selected the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7, um, 28 to 35. And then actually at the end of the month, we continue this, this chapter um, when the Lord speaks to and saves and announces the forgiveness of the repentant woman. <clears throat> so... Um, as we were saying, it, it is the love of God that ignites the heart of the Christian to burn a flame um, with the light of repentance and with the heat of, of fiery service, bearing witness to, to the Lord as a consuming fire who inflames those whom he knows and loves and erases or eliminates with the same fire the sin. <clears throat> um, Today, I'll just kind of contemplate on, um, by God's grace, on what the Lord was speaking about here when he was, he was talking about that, what should I compare this generation? So he gives another type of parable here where he's saying there are like children in the marketplace um, playing a certain game, right? So St. Cyril kind of contemplates on this. Um, and the, basically he said, they, they, these children said, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourn to you and you did not weep. So St. Cyril says this is basically um, a, a potentially a game that happened back then where there were two groups of kids. One group would um, play lively, joyful music and songs to get the other group to, uh, to be excited and happy. And, um, <clears throat> and the other group would pretend uh, to, to weep and cry and mourn to get the other group um, to follow suit, right? So the whole objective is to, to convince the other group to do what you're doing. Um, and uh, he uses this example um, twofold, to show in a sense nowadays, we have the church or the group of the believers of, of, of God doing one thing, and then the world is doing another. Right? And each group is trying to convince the other group um, to do the same. <clears throat> and so sometimes the church will say, weep for your sins. And the world will say, no, no, be happy, um, live it up. Right? Or the church will say, rejoice in Christ and salvation. And then the world will say, no, 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 be sad, um, uh, mourn. Um, <clears throat> so the church is, is oftentimes um, against the world. Right? And the Lord even said to his disciples, most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. Right? And you will be sorrowful, but your, sorrowful will your sorrow will turn into joy. 
right? So the worldly sorrow is different than the, the heavenly repentance, right? Or the, the spiritual sadness over our sins. So the world sorrows over the worldly things, but the, the Christian sorrows over the sin, or the spiritual things that separate us from the love of Christ, right? But it's a temporary sorrow, not a depression, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, so oftentimes the Christian should feel different and, and not, things don't go usually smoothly in general society for the Christians, right? And I think we're even noticing this more and more in this society that is changing, right? And it's becoming more antagonistic uh, in general towards, towards the Christian lifestyle, <clears throat> right? Um, another thing in the gospel um, that I wanted to point out here before that, the Lord um, was, uh, or, or St. Luke describes that when all the people heard him, even the tax collectors justified God having been baptized by him, like, you know, St. Matthew and, and, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, and um, but then the Lord with the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected. It says the St. Luke says they rejected the will of God or sometimes uh, it's translated the purpose of God for themselves. Right. So um, here the, the, the idea is if we listen to this voice that does not come from God, we may be rejecting the will of God for ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and what does this mean? Of, of course, we know what the will of God for each and every um, Christian is, is to be saved, to live a holy life, um, to be victorious over sin, right? To enter uh, the, the kingdom of heaven by the grace of God, right? To repent over the sins now so we could rejoice over the forgiveness that we receive from our Lord, <clears throat> right? So this is kind of like the flute that the Lord plays for us, is um, he sends our Holy, his Holy Spirit to us to, to tell us, you know, get up and pray or read the scripture, forgive that person, don't hold a grudge, don't love the world, um, don't, don't um, put your whole heart in that one thing that, that you want to purchase. Um, don't get worked, about, worked up about this problem. Give it to the Lord, right? Do the right thing. Don't justify yourself. Um, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Turn the other cheek. Go the second mile, right? Oftentimes in our life, we might hear that, that Holy Spirit reminding us, um, playing the flute, okay, do this good. And we have the choice um, to listen or not. And oftentimes when we do listen, we find our life blessed and we find our life in the right track. <clears throat> and then when we don't listen, sometimes that voice gets louder or something else might happen to wake us up. Okay, um, so... This is, I think, one of the, the main messages for us when we're starting the new year, how to make sure we are quick to hear this voice and to be able to discern the voice from one group over the other. Um, and over time, if I am trying to pay attention and not just listen to e listening to every voice or every thought, then God will give me the wisdom and discernment to be able to separate the, the right voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit, from everything else. <clears throat> Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, this time we celebrate all of the martyrs, not just on the Baptist, but all of the martyrs in the church. And that's why the church selected these days um, to celebrate the new year. And the, these celebrations end with what? The Feast of the Cross, right? So the church is teaching us, okay, in the beginning, we have to remember what we're called to do. We're called to be martyrs. We're called to be witnesses. <clears throat> and how do we do that? The cross, right? Um, and this is not easy, right? Um, uh, even we read about uh, the in the Synexarium the example of the prophet Isaiah, right? And um, St. Paul in Hebrews 11 gives us the testimony of various witnesses um, who, who lived the, the true Christian lifestyle even before the incarnation, right? He says in Hebrews 11, he says, women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might attain a better resurrection. Still others had a trial of mockings and scourging, yes, as of chains and imprisonment. St. John the Baptist also was imprisoned, as we know. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. That's Isaiah, 
according to the, the syndic term, or the custom of the church. They were tempted, they were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Right? So this is the model that the church places for us in the church. It's a joyful model, and that's why even we have the joyful tune, and we're in the festivities of the martyrs who gave up their life for Christ. So to the world, it doesn't make sense. He said, no, you should be weeping. No, we are rejoicing. Why? Because this is, this is the true Christian uh, lifestyle. Um, as the Lord says in the gospel according to St. John chapter 12, he says, most assuredly, he doesn't just say assuredly, he says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. So you are the grain of wheat. You have to die. You have to go to the ground and die. He says, but if it dies, it produces much grain. What happened when the martyrs died? Did the faith get weakened? No, it got stronger, right? Even those who didn't believe witnessed and believed, right? And they saw this great testimony of those who loved the Lord to the end and, and gave up their lives joyfully for, for a great purpose. And they said, I want to be like that too, <clears throat> right? So the per And then the Lord continues by saying, he who hates his life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Right? But if you love your life, you love the worldly things, he said you'll lose it. Everything of this world will pass away. But his words will not pass away. His kingdom will not pass away. Um, his believers will pass from, li from life to life. Um, <clears throat> and so that's why the Lord says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor, or her. Right? So what do we get out of this is that these great martyrs, the word martyr actually means witness. So they bear witness to the, the true light, to Christ, right? And so my job, my purpose is also to bear witness, to bear witness to the Lord in my life, um, to do what is right, to walk in the way of truth, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, regardless of the consequences. You know, St. John the Baptist was, was this hardliner. He always... Uh, by the grace of God, did what was right, even though it meant persecution and, and martyrdom, right? Um, what led to his martyrdom? You know the story in the gospel. Was it all the baptisms he made? Was it, was it the baptism of Christ? Was it the disciples that, that he collected and then he, he brought them to the Lord? It was, it was one simple thing that actually no one else wanted to do. You know, the King Herod, right? What did he do? He he went and he took his brother's wife, right? And and everyone knew this was wrong. This was wrong by the Roman standards. This was wrong by the Jewish standards. This was by any standard. It was absolutely sinful. But no one stood up or spoke up. Why? They were afraid. <laughs> um, and so, because um, he's he's the most powerful person. He could do anything. Um, but St. John said, no, it's not lawful for you to have your, your brother's wife. And because of that, he, he was martyred, right? Um, and the custom of the tradition of the church says even after they, they, um, they cut his, his head, he still said the same thing, right? Meaning, I will insist to say what is right, um, regardless of the consequence. You can kill me, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is the spirit that we want to have. Um, sometimes we give up the, the, the Christian way of life or the proper decision because we're afraid of something else. Well, what is this person going to say? What are they going to do? What are the consequences? I don't want to get in trouble, right? It's a lot of these things. But, but the true witness does, it does what is right. Um, and so we, we take this great example of John the Baptist in, in all the aspects of our life. <clears throat> So his voice was not a popular voice, but it was the right one, right? He was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. No one else was singing the same song as him. Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is the example of martyrdom that we want to have. Um, after the, the era of martyrdom, which was, you know, for 10 different, you know, waves of persecution in the early church, um, the, the believers after that said, well, wait a second, we want to be martyrs too. What do we do? 
So they came up with something called white martyrdom. Um, and the church says this is, this is the, the life of, of asceticism and purity. Um, and so people dedicated their lives like the monks and nuns um, who wanted to offer themselves to the Lord um, uh, after the time of persecution. There was, there was no one to, to stand up before and say, I am Christian, and they would kill them and they would offer their life as a sacrifice. So they said, well, we could still offer our life as a sacrifice, as St. As Paul says. <clears throat> And so they tasted the life of martyrdom in their daily life. And, and so we also are in the same boat. Um, maybe we're not called to be, to be monks and, and nuns, but we can still live the, the life or the spirit of, of the martyr, the witness. Um, so we have to give testimony to our Lord, whether by word or by deed. <clears throat> and so um, St. Justin Martyr, also in the early church, he said... Um, Though beheaded and crucified and thrown to all beasts in chains and fire and all other tortures, we do not give up our confession. So that's the, that's the spirit that we want to have. Regardless of whatever people do, if they cancel me or whatever, you know, the cancel culture, where like, if you say anything wrong that doesn't go about, that doesn't abide with everyone else, they, they cut you off. Okay, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> um, this is not my goal, is to be accepted by everyone no, the, the Lord said the world hated the world hates you. Know that the world hates you, and it hated me before it hated you. Right? Um, so sometimes they use this tactic to convince people to come to their side. Well, it's the wrong side. So sorry. Um, and uh, Saint Cyprian the bishop, also an early church martyr, he said um, those who were tortured were more courageous than those who tortured them. He said the broken members of their bodies conquered the weapons used against them. The blood they shed quieted the waves of persecution, quenched the flames of Hades, and watered the seeds of the Christian faith. Right? And also Tertullian, uh, the scholar, he says uh, in another place, um, I don't have it here, but he said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Right. So the blood of the martyrs made the church grow and, and stand strong. It didn't weaken. Sometimes we think if I give in, or if I have this persecution, people will see my example and say, see, this is what your Christianity brought you. Um, no, the opposite actually happens. <clears throat> so um, then the question is, well, how do I start? What are the baby steps that I need to take now? Because I'm, I'm not really at the point yet of, of giving up my life um, and shedding my blood. Um, but how do I get there? Well, there's so many different things that God has given me as an opportunity to sacrifice a little bit of, whether it's my time or my energy or my money or my pride or my ego or, or my food with the, with the fasting or my clothing, right? Or whatever it might be that I can give. There's so many opportunities in my daily life um, to, say, to, to, to take um, the, the scriptures and to abide by them. <clears throat> That's basically the first step. Um, and it takes years to get, I think, to the point um, of, of martyrdom. But any true Christian um, who grows in the faith will be willing at one time to, to give up whatever is secondary um, for, for, the, for the prize. <clears throat> and that's why St. Paul says, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. So the first thing I have to do is fight against sin before I, you know, uh, fight against those who persecute me and, and stand up and witness. No, I have to fight a struggle against the sin that I am in. Um, <clears throat> and so um, I'll just conclude with, with a quote from uh, Abu Nabushoi Kamil, um, a recent saint in the church. He says, martyrdom is an outburst of love to the point of bloodshed, right? So the, the fact that I am aflame with the love of God is... It, martyrdom is just showing what is inside. He says, it is love and keeping Christ's commandments. So if I love God, I will keep the commandments. That's like the, the, the first step in, in um, living a holy life, right? Martyrdom is carrying out the Bible's commandments to the end. Uh, martyrdom is the nature of the life with Christ. It is the course of struggle against sin, against the ego, and the struggle for chastity and purity. <clears throat> martyrdom is witnessing and we are witnesses for the Lord in all aspects of our lives throughout the world. 
So the question is, well, how can I be more of a witness to the Lord? Attempt by the grace of God to struggle against sin, to live a holier life, to make a sacrifice regardless of what other people say and other people think. For me, I think it's important to sacrifice this thing. Do it by the grace of God. right? <clears throat> and so on these feast days, we want to taste um, these things in a joyful way, not in a mournful way. Right? Um, and we tell the Lord, I want to crucify myself and my desires. Um, help me. I don't want to live um, any longer, but I want you to live in me. I want to carry the cross with joy. And, and I want to see the power that is um, infused in it when I willingly take up this out of love for you. For you. you did everything and more for my sake. Help me do a little. Um, <clears throat> and then... Um, then we begin to disappear and decrease, and the Lord grows more and more in us. Uh, may the grace of God fill us with, with this spirit of witnessing um, that we may uh, rejoice in him and he in us. Glory be to him now and from to the age of all ages. Send me to preach unto the poor and broken and acceptable year before the Lord.